welcome back. Um, if you don't know who I am, I am Clarissa. I am the co-founder and lead scientist here at Freckled Fins Fishing Company. And today we are going to be talking about stock assessments. <laughs> this is a, I don't want to say it's kind of a boring but necessary topic, but it kind of is because stock assessments are super important to the work we do here at Freckled Fins. It's the main project we're working on right now and it is kind of confusing and on a surface level it seems like it should be super simple and everyone should understand it but the problem is is that they're making it seem simple and there's all sorts of problems with this process so that's what we're going to walk through today let's go so to start um let's talk about who's in charge of these so currently the only people in charge of the stock assessments is NOAA fisheries which is the national oceanic and oh my god what does NOAA stand for it's like national oceanic and aquatic association or something like that but NOAA is in charge of um, the fisheries aspect of NOAA is in charge of all of this so what they do is they are sort of like the government entity in charge of regulating this sort of thing and they are the ones doing all of the scientific work to figure out all these fish populations so stock assessments are basically just fish population counts in the in the simplest terms I guess you could say it's not just population counts and it's not an accurate population counts so these stock assessments are the most accurate way we have of tracking fish populations because tracking the numbers of fish populations and they these stock assessments usually do not follow highly migratory species which are a lot of things that a lot of people in our community are used to fishing like marlin, yellowfin tuna, bluefin tuna, uh, like a lot of billfish, um, what are some other ones, bluefish aren't really included in this, uh, striped bass aren't really included in this, so it's, it's sort of it's just not that great and as someone who's in the scientific community I sit here and I look at this and I think okay why are we not taking this with a grain of salt and it's because it's all controlled by one government entity that then reports to the EPA the Environmental Protection Agency and they create the laws that go about how many fish that could, that they make the laws then about how many fish you can catch about the different catch shares that the commercial community gets and so on and so forth but if you don't understand how these population counts are being done then you don't understand the whole process say hi hey everybody john Should wanted we to stop oh bring finn in yeah we i think we showed finn in the last one come here buddy oh hey yo hey yo finn oh wow okay oh no he wants he wants to stand. Hey yo. Oh you strip okay. Yes, he wants he wants down. So directly according to Noah there are three fundamental I'm literally reading this off of their they have this big PDF file about everything you need to know about stock assessments. It's like two hundred and some pages long. If y'all wanna read it, feel free to go and read it. But I read it for you. So if this video is a good old summary of this. So according to them there are three fundamental components of stock assessments. Data collection and processing, stock assessment modeling, which we will get into all of these individually, and then developing and communicating recommendations. So Basically what they do is they take the different ways they get data, they collect data, they create models from it, and then based off of those models they make recommendations about how many fish you should catch, where you should be catching them, where you can't catch them, blah blah blah. So 
the data that they collect, then they go into this and they tell you about all the different things that the stock assessments do. So the stock assessments, from those stock assessments, they determine what the biological limits to sustainable fishing are and what fraction of the stock should be harvested each year. And they also determine if the stock is being overfished. Then they, after they determine these things, they forecast short-term future catch levels. So basically what they're doing is um, trying to predict how the how this fish population is going to go. Is it being overfished? Is this detrimental to them? Do you guys need to slow down fishing? Do you need to stop completely? How is this affecting you guys? So basically it is taking this to determine how bad it is for everybody to be fishing in. Legislation wise, what they do is determine the ABC. If you are into commercial fishing, even a lot of like John, he knows what ABC is. That's the acceptable biological catch. Those are the species that you can and cannot catch. And then there are ACLs, which are your annual catch limits. So I know y'all, most of the people who follow us and watch our videos and things like that, y'all are avid fishermen and know that your annual catch limits and different species that you can catch are all based off of the different region that you're in. If you're in the Gulf Coast, it's different than if you're in the Northern Atlantic, than if you're in the Mid-Atlantic and blah, blah, blah. Because that's there's different fish species in each, different ocean conditions, different everything. So that's why this whole thing can get really, really confusing very, very quickly. The problem with this is that the data that they are collecting is terrible. I am saying that as a, that is my personal opinion as a scientist, as someone who is studying this extensively, as someone who has read 200 pages about how they are collecting this data. As a scientist, the main thing that they teach you is what is scientifically sound and what is not. And they model these, in my opinion, they model these fish stock assessment models about this to the same accuracy that they model a black hole in space. <laughs> like, they're, they're kind of big empty questions because they're taking really strangely collected data and using it to in a very generalized way to make this really broad assumption that affects the fishing community so so much so to give you an example of this they are collecting data from they claim they're collecting data from the recreational fishing community now as me and john are members of the recreational fishing community as are many of many many of you most of you are any of you turning in data to noah about the fisher catching we're not we didn't even know that was a thing so we started looking into it and we found that there is a program where you can tell noah different things about the fish you're catching it's usually the species you're catching and how many of it you're catching and the only way you can submit the data is either by calling it in or mailing it in. I don't know about you, but I'm a I'm like Gen Z and as a 23-year-old, I don't mail anything and I don't like to call people. So and they're not convenient for me either like the only thing I mail are your guys' freckle fin orders and, and my Poshmark. So I just, this is so inconvenient. It's so behind the curve of what needs to be happening if they want to be collecting data from the recreational fishing community. Now, the commercial guys, they have a different method of collection from them. I think they are, rec the, they don't really put that out to the public very much, but they 
I definitely have to tell the regulatory, whoever regulates the fishing community, they have to tell them what fish they're catching, how many, but that also has to deal with the fact that they sell them. So that's all kept in paperwork. But the commercial guys are usually going after a lot different species than the recreational people. And we also fish different ways, different places and all these sorts of things, different times of the year. So this is not the best way to collect data because one, you're not getting the majority of the data and you're also not getting a lot of data. So data is more accurate the more you get, obviously. So you don't need to be a scientist to know that. Another way they collect population data that I've actually seen is that NOAA will ha they have their own scientists like I'm not putting down the scientists at NOAA I know they work hard they probably just don't have the resources to do a lot of these things and they're also not members of the fishing community they're marine biologists and other scientists who are taught to do these things based off a certain way and sometimes it's hard to put yourself in the perspective of someone who's really out there fishing and doing this sort of stuff. So another thing they do to collect data is they put these big um, sort of like nets, but the fish can go through them. They don't get caught in them. It's just sort of giving them more, it's more like a tunnel and they put cameras in them and then they can see what species that is from the camera and they can count how many of each fish go through this certain area. So they basically take, they know how big this tunnel is. They multiply that and be in that area and say, okay, we saw 10 bluefish go through this net in a day. So we'll multiply that times the area, this tube area, times the area of the ocean, and that's how many bluefish there are in this area. That is also not very accurate because you're not taking into account the different, that fish might have just not swam through there. You're also not taking into account, are, is the camera in a place that the fish tend to be more often or less often? Are you taking into account their migratory patterns? Different things like that. and. The way fish move and travel, it all, it's very difficult. Talk to any marine biologist. They, they, they migrate differently. They live together differently. And all these, it gets very complicated. And Noah is basically saying, we're going to generalize all of this and make these numbers, plug them into these models. Now let's talk about the models for a second. These models are mathematical models, and I know most of you don't know anything about mathematical models, but they, if you've ever taken a physics course or a lot of calculus courses and things like that, you, you assume a lot of things. Like you assume in a lot of instances that there's no friction or there's no torque on things, there's no other stuff like that. You you make best case scenario. And so NOAA does the opposite of this and they make worst case scenario because they'd rather make sure the fish are too safe than not safe enough. And when you mix this with the fact that they're not collecting enough data, they're plugging it into these models, so about the they know something about the fish population based off of the data they collected so let's just for easy sake they'll say there's a hundred fish in the north in the mid-atlantic region then we plug it into this model and we'll say okay the average fisherman cat goes out this many times catches this many fish based off of whatever we set the laws to that leaves this many fish we know they reproduce this much per year and we need this much of the population for them to stay safe so they can take all those numbers plug them into a little model and say okay then this is how many fish you can catch per year 
So if they are grossly, grossly underestimating how many fish there are, you can't catch as many. Neither can the commercial fishermen, so they suffer because they can't catch as many fish, they can't bring in as much revenue for their family, and you suffer as a recreational fisherman because you can't catch as many fish either. So we want to do our part to make sure this data is good so that you all can get the most out of <laughs> the bounties of the ocean without having to sacrifice the fish population. Our number one priority is to make sure these fish are safe and to make sure that we are keeping the ocean ecosystem super, super healthy. Without that, we are not going to keep the fishing community lasting for generations and generations. And we are here to serve the fishing community for generations and generations. So right now, what we are working on is bettering the stock assessment data collection methods. If you would seriously consider helping us, we have a survey out right now where we're trying to just get some general data from you guys about what you would be willing to do, how much data you'd be willing to share. We know it's not the best thing for us to share where you're catching fish, how many you're catching, because we don't want you guys to feel like we're going to take that data from you and use it to benefit our own fishing, our fishing teams that we will hopefully have in the future or sell it to people for benefit in fishing tournaments. We're not going to do that. This data is for us to help you and to better this whole process for the fishing community together. So if you'd like to help, the link in the description, it'll be the first thing right on top. It's a link to our survey and we would love if you guys would take it and just help us to see what data you think we should be collecting um which what methods of data collection you would be willing to participate in as a fisher person and all of that jazz so i hope this was really informative for you guys if you have any more questions please drop them in the comments send us an email my email is clarissa at freckledfinfishing.com. I will also put all that in the description. You can DM us on Instagram. We are Freckled Fin Fishing Co. on Instagram. Hit us up on Twitter. We check all that stuff. We love to hear from you guys. So tell us what you need and we will do our best to help you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next week or you can watch John's video coming later this week. I think he's going to talk about striped bass. So, catch you then, guys. I don't care that your hair's all messed up. Cause say hi put the cowboy hat on. Uh, I don't know. I think my hat's too big. Goodbye. And this my hair on the bottom looks orange, and on this side it looks pink. It looks the exact same.